Welcome back. Welcome back to another State of the Market uh, for August uh, 2022. Uh, we got some really good stuff happening today. Real estate is the big, big buzzword on the streets. Um, as you guys can see, I got my new hat today. Uh, big props out to Damon over there, Advanced Embroidery. He got me my new hat on Buy Dirt, which I'm going to get into with everybody here in a little bit. Uh, so um, I want to get right into it and get to the numbers. All right. So we do these every month uh, to keep everybody abreast of what's going on with the market. Uh, and if you're uh, selling or buying or just curious, uh, this video is for you. Uh, so let's get right down to it. I am going to go ahead and just give you a little screen share here, guys. And uh, the first um, quadrant that we want to talk about is our median sales price, right? So everybody says, oh, the price is going to be dropping. Oh, the price is going to be dropping. Uh, it depends. Uh, some prices are not dropping. Some prices are on properties are going uh, higher. Uh, but the average uh, sale price is six fifty. We like to go a couple of months back, right? So in July it was six fifty one. So it dropped a thousand bucks, not a lot. But then in June it picked up uh, from six forty two, and in May it was six fifty six. So six fifty six, six forty two, six fifty one. Here we are today as average median sale price point on uh, Cape Cod and the islands from Plymouth to P Town. 650,000, all right? Uh, the next uh, quadrant that we wanna look at is homes for sale. So this is a big indicator of how the market uh, is doing. And so we have 651 properties for sale. Is that a lot or a little? Well, it's a lot, it's not a lot. It's very, very little. Uh, people say the inventory has increased and I agree, it has increased, but not enough to the point where it's gonna make a big difference on the market. Let me show you real quick. August was 651, right? 650 units for sale. Plymouth to P-Town, condos, houses, and land. In July, uh, we had 708. So we actually went down in inventory. Um, back in June, it was 662. It was um, 550 here in May. April was 463. March was 431. And the lowest of lowest uh, at all of its points, it was at 355. So at the lowest, lowest point is it with 355, double that to be 700. Today we're at 651. We still got a long way to go to bring the inventory up, but it is getting better because it's increased about 40 or 50 units every month. But then it took a dip again in August. So uh, real estate um, here on the Cape, August, September, October, are predominantly very good months. People want to buy a house get their kids in before school, things like that. Vacations are over. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me that it dropped back down to 651. Uh, let's talk about days on market. So this lets us know as sellers and buyers and real estate agents, how active the market is, how quickly your home will go under contract. So do we have houses selling under, under within seven days? Yes. Do we have houses on the market that have been on the market for a hundred days? Yes. So, when you add those all up together and you average them out, it comes out to seven days on market still. So last month was seven. Take a look at July, seven. Look at June, seven. Look at May, six. Look at April, six. So we've been hovering between six and seven days on market here for the last four or five months. And I don't see it creeping up anymore. If your house is priced right, right? We talk about the three Ps all the time, right? If your house is priced right, it's presented properly, meaning it looks good, and it's promoted properly by your real estate agent slash broker, and it's exposed to the world, yes, your house will sell. It'll sell for top dollar. It'll sell fast, and hopefully within seven days. All right? The last quarter I want to talk about is percentage of list price. So this is a pretty important slide here because this tells us as real estate agents how sellers are doing with the price of their house. So if they sell their house, if they list their house, say for a hundred dollars, how much would, would we expect to bring in as an agent? Um, before COVID back here, in, before 2020, right? March of 2020, uh, you know, we were down here bringing 90, 99, 98, 97% of, 
uh, list to sale price. So then we had a big jump here in June when everybody was buying houses like crazy and they were over asking. And that was the highest point, which was 103.5 over list price. So the last month here in August, it's leveled off to 100, 100%. So if you're asking $100 for your house, according to these statistics, you should get $100 for your house, okay? So let's see, August was 100%. July was 101. So what does that tell us? That tells us the offers aren't coming in quite as strong over asking. What is June? That was 103, okay? So we're down at 100%. So what, it, what I'm getting at here is if you list your house, you should be able to get what you're asking for it or very close. Don't expect $25,000, $75,000, $100,000 over asking. You might get that, but it's going to be very, very, very rare. And it would have to be a super, super special property with a lot of activity and a lot of offers. Okay? All right. So that takes care of the quadrants. Let's move into our next uh, slide here. Let's see. I believe it's right here. All right. So what's happening in the uh, current housing market? All right. So we're going to talk about the weekly uh, weekly mortgage rates that uh, continue to fluctuate. Right now, they're sitting at 4.99. All right. I just did a um, pre-approval for a client for a 30-year fixed secondary home, too. 4.50. All right. So the rates are sitting here at uh, 4.99 as an average. All right. Let's take a look at slide four. I want to go over this again with you guys and just share with you what is a recession, the actual legal definition of it, uh, because we hear that word a lot. People seem to throw that word around uh, like it's nothing. Uh, but it's serious business, right? Because it affects everybody in the economy and, and what we do and how we work and how we play. So the real definition of a recession is from the national bureau of economic research it defines a recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy lasting more than usually a few months usually two normally visible in the real gdp which is growth domestic product uh, real income employment industrial production in wholesale slash retail sales so how does a recession come about? You have to have two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So if you look at this chart here real quick, they're showing that we had two negative growth, uh, two negative months of growth back in quarter two of 2020. So that was, you know, COVID. All right. And that's certainly understandable. Everything was shut down. So now here we are, um, a quarter one of 2022 and quarter two of 2022 and we don't know yet the numbers aren't in okay so we don't know if we're going to hit those two consecutive months of uh negative growth so that'll be interesting to see all right uh i want to get into here this next slide with you here's number 11 so this is mortgage rates and recessions uh, excuse me um over the five past recessions mortgage rates have fallen an average of 1.8 percent 1.8 percentage points from the peak seen during the recession to the trough. And in many cases, they've continued to fall after the fact, as it takes some time to turn things around, even when the recession is technically over. So what they're saying is normally in a, uh, in a recession, you'll see interest rates drop and, and, and taper off. Exactly what we're seeing right now, okay? Why the housing market won't crash, okay? Listen. We do these state of the markets for you guys on pure data. This isn't stuff that I make up. We have conferences we go to, networking events, other real estate agents, sellers and buyers that we talk to, and all kinds of podcasts, reading material. At the end of the day, you know, we want to give you guys the best information that's up to date and accurate so that you make smart decisions. We want you to be the smartest people at the closing ta table, knowing that what you did makes sense and you're comfortable with it. So that's why we do these, and we love doing them for you. So why the housing market won't crash? 
So there's not enough homes for sale. We talked about that, right? There was only like 700 units for sale here on the Cape, but this is more of a national thing. So anytime that you're less than three months of inventory, that's a seller's market, right? We've talked about that before. So a seller's market is four to five months. Neutral is maybe six months. And then a buyer's market would be six months or more of inventory. So it's been a seller's market since, if you look at it, right about here, since 2013, when there was 4.9 months. That's when the market really kind of took off, January of 2013. I remember it very clearly. Okay. We had 4.9, 5.2, 3.9, 4.0, no, no, no. all the way up down here, down to 3.0 months of inventory. So what that means is if no more inventory came on the market today, we would run out of houses nationally in three months. Okay. Hope that was clear. All right, let's go to number 16. Okay, so another indicator of why the market won't crash is foreclosures, okay? Everybody has too much equity in their property. They're not gonna just hand the keys over and say, I can't make my payment anymore. I've done my best and here's the house. That's not gonna happen. Sure, there's people that run into issues and problems, but it's very, very minuscule. Take a look at this. So far in 2000, uh, well, 2021, 151,000 foreclosures, you know, that's nationally, okay? Now, look at when there was uh, a market crash and there was a problem back here in 07. So you got 1.3, 2.3, 2.8, as high as 2.9 million foreclosures. 2.9 million foreclosures. We're down to 151,000, okay? If people are gonna be behind on their mortgage, all they gotta do is just call a real estate agent up they're going to put a sale in front of their house. They're going to clean it up. They're going to sell it, cash out, right? They're not going to let all that equity go to waste. I know I personally would. All right, let's get to number 20. So here's the months of inventory for sale. We just talked about this a minute ago. Seller's market is less than six. We were at three, right? Three months of inventory. Neutral market, six to seven. And then the buyer's market is when you have seven months of inventory or more. So here's a little graph here of when it's been. So the last time they're saying it was a seller's market was really back in probably 1999 up to maybe about 2005. And then in 06 through 010, you know, or uh, say 012, it was a buyer's market. And then it shifted again, I would say right about here, 2013 is when it started picking up uh, briskly and to where we are today. Uh, it's just uh, three months of inventory um, so it's a seller's market. All right, number 21. So what's ahead for the rest of the year, Scott? Uh, there's my crystal ball right there. You can see it nice and clear. Uh, so um, here's what's going to happen. So mortgage rates are predicted to be here. So fourth quarter, they're saying 5.3. These are all the uh, people that are predicting. Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, MBA, NAR. So we're already sitting at 4.9. So they're already actually a little higher than they predicted. Um, they're predicting in the first quarter, like January, February, March next year, 5.2. Second quarter, maybe 5.8. And then third quarter of 2023, maybe 4.9. And um, like I said, I just did a loan the other day at 4.5. So these predictions are probably going to keep getting massaged and changed over time, especially when they find out um, how we did on the last two quarters, if we're actually in a recession or not, okay? So the reason I uh, wanted to bring that up is, is my new hat. You guys see my new hat, okay? If you can't read it because it's backwards, it says by dirt. And what I mean by by dirt, not only do I love that song by uh, Luke, uh, 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 Luke Bryan, uh, but by dirt is uh, a symbolization for me today uh, to share with you that, look, at prices are not going to come down where we live. Um, if you're looking at this from a local uh, uh, aspect like Cape Cod, people want to live on Cape Cod. This isn't a place that they need to live. They want to live here. Um, they've come here with their family and friends for generations. And when it comes time, you know, they want to retire here and live here. And it's a fabulous place to live. And there's other places that are great to live, too. But Here's the thing. The Cape over the last four years, in my opinion, 
has started to become the new Martha's Vineyard. So if you go over to Martha's Vineyard, you say, I just want to buy a nice little cup house over there for me and my family. You probably have to spend between 550 and 600,000 for maybe like a two bedroom, one bath, 800 square feet house that needs work. Okay. So that's awfully expensive for a small little piece of property. Although Martha's Vineyard is wonderful and it's a beautiful place to live, but it's not the most affordable. The Cape is becoming the new Martha's Vineyard. So hence the hat, buy dirt, don't wait and sit on the sidelines because all the prices are going to just keep going up. Even if it's just a, for a few years and then they settle off a little bit, we're all into real estate for the long run, right? So buy now while you, the prices are still low, hold it, rent it, use it, Airbnb it, do whatever it is that you want. The rates are still good and they're dropping. So I hate to see anybody pay more than they have to, right? Why pay more for something today, uh, for tomorrow, when you can get it for less money today? That's always been a big philosophy philosophy of mine is why pay more tomorrow if you don't have to today? So if you're in the market for a property, now is an opportune time to jump back in and get yourself uh, your uh, dream home, second home, investment home, or land. Just sold a nice piece of land the other day. One of our clients is building a beautiful house and sandwich. So buy dirt. Get out there and buy dirt, right? All right. Uh, let's talk about number 24, uh, home price forecast. So where is real estate going here um, for um, how much money can we expect to make in the next, uh, in, the, in the forecast for the future? So the average uh, is going to be, you know, 10.3%. Normally, in a normal market, that's three to four percent. That's a normal market. So we've been high as high as 18 to 20 percent with inflation on prices of houses, right? So that's settled down, right? So now we're probably closer to maybe 10 or 12 percent. But at the end of the day, the average of all these forecasts is Fannie Mae at 16 percent, Freddie Mac at 12, NAR at 11, Zellman at, at 10, CoreLogic at 9.6. HPES at 9.3 and MBA uh, very, very low at 2.7. When you average them all up, it comes up to 10% 10, 10 uh, home price increase forecast. And that's just for the end of 2022. So at the end of the day, if you buy a half million dollar house for 500,000, there's a good chance it's going to be worth 550 at the end of the December 31st, 2022. So that's $50,000 that you just made in equity. I don't think you can do that anywhere in such a short period of time. And that's why real estate is what I love about real estate. And that's why people invest in it. And that's why people buy it. Um, so there you have it. Average of 10% increase uh, for uh, the remainder of 2022. I love this slide right here because this really breaks it down for everybody. So three reasons to buy a home today, right? Buy dirt. So we're seeing fewer multiple offer scenarios, right? In April, there was an average of 5.5 offers per uh, property. In May, that slipped to 4.2 offers per property. In June, that slipped again to 3.4 offers per property. So what that saying is there's less people that were putting in offers uh, for the last three months. Fewer homes selling above asking price. So in April, 61% of all the homes sold were over asking price. In May, that dropped to 55% over asking price. In June, it slipped again to 50. So over half the properties that are being sold are being sold over asking price. So that gives buyers room to get a property at a good price still without having to go 25, 50, 75, 100,000. I saw one the other day for $300,000 over asking and jump back in, right? If you've been waiting on the sideline, jump back in and select a piece of property. I think you'll find that there's less competition, less long lines, and you're not going to have to pay as much uh, for these properties as uh, folks have been paying for the last uh, two years. All right. So the supply of homes is also for sale by growing. It's growing. We talked about this. So in April, we only had 2.2 months of inventory, right? 
in May it went to 2.6, and today we're at 3.0 months of inventory, which is again seller's market. Okay. I want to go to number 71 and wrap this up. It's called good stuff, right? Um, it's really important to know all this stuff if you're in the market to buy or sell. Uh, and if you own a piece of property, it's just good to know where you are so you know when to pull the trigger if you're thinking about doing it. Uh, so let's talk about mortgage rates real quick. We touched on this earlier. Right now we're at 4.99. Like I said, I just did a deal on a 30-year fixed rate, 4.5. Guy had excellent credit. Uh, that was for a secondary home with 20% down. So uh, mortgage rates are, um, they were up there a little bit, right? Five, five and a quarter, five and a half, almost like close to six. Now they're just within the last few days, uh, a couple of weeks, they dropped down to 4.99. That's a good sign. And then I want to get to number 75 and just kind of see maybe where we are on the projected uh, interest rates. We talked about this a little earlier, but here we are right now. And then these are for the next, a uh, few quarters, so they expect them to go up. So here we are, quarter two, quarter three, right here. All right, and then uh, the fourth quarter, uh, dropping down, and then getting into a little bit of the first, second, and third quarter of 2023. So hey, the interest rates are still really good. You know, uh, I'm not going to get into you know how great they are and what they were, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or whatever. But listen, you have to pay interest, right? It's just a matter of how much. But if you can get the house of your dreams or your house that you're looking for and you always, you know, decided to live on Cape Cod or even YOLO, right? So we get a lot of people with YOLO, right? You only live once, right? So does the interest rate really make that much of a difference? At the end of the day, not that much if you really can afford it and this is the place you want to live and um, enjoy your life. Um, yes, I mean, at a half a point or a point does make a difference. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say, you know, that it's not important, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, I remember when eights were eight, nine, ten percent my first house. I can share stories with you when they were, you know, 15, 16 percent back in the, you know, the early 80s. So, um, you know, these are good rates. Take advantage of them. Well, we're going to see 2.99, 3.5, 3.99, probably not. So if you can get somewhere in the 445, 499, it's a good rate. Take advantage of it. I'm going to just jump back and share my screen. Thank you guys so much for sharing another uh, state of the market with us. Uh, we love doing these videos and these uh, market uh, stats for you. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, reach me at 508-566-0051. Shoot me an email at sjzano at gmail.com. Uh, swing by the office. Uh, I'd love to have you come by. We have a cup of coffee. Uh, and uh, uh, let us know if there's anything we can do. That we're always happy to help. Business is rocking and rolling. We are straight out, okay? Uh, and that is the God honest truth. And uh, we're happy and we're grateful and we're thankful for all the business that we've had over the last 15 years or so. And uh, we're looking forward to helping more sellers and more buyers the next six months. And then we'll see what uh, 2023 brings. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. God bless. I'm out.